Yeah. Yeah. So um right now I notice a lot of like agitation come up, a lot of like suffering, but it's not labeled to anything in particular. So like in the past, if I would have meditated, I would have been in my mind thinking different thoughts, different stories and different narratives. Um related to like events and things that have happened it'd be very personal but right now it's just like suffering the feeling of like suffering is coming up agitation like kundalini kind of energies and like whew, like kind of jerking sometimes uh anything around that yeah just suffering without labels suffering without labels and I think I know where it's coming from. It's it's kind of like a work part of it's almost a work thing, right? Because mm. um when I was younger, um uh, before I knew I had celiac disease, I used to um to study or to yeah, to study, I had to really push myself because I'd be so tired and so fatigued that I would like be using like my sheer force of will just to uh just to study. And um, years of that accumulated, I guess, had has had an impact on my system. Where now, like working, is f- feels like a lot of effort, more effort than it should. And so, I think what's coming up in the meditation is like all that, like agitation or um pressure of um exerting myself, like kind of coming up. And hopefully, things will start to be a lot easier for me. Yeah. I hear you. It's just that. Um, mm, can I share one little insight with you? Go for it. Um. So, what's happening? Circum. There's a saying called "circumstances don't matter; only state of being matters." So, because it it is sort of like in all the spiritual reality, there is a saying that experiences what you're experiencing is created from within so now because within yourself you you experience suffering so no matter what's going on outside it doesn't matter to you right no matter something happen 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 or it just because you are the suffering is from within and then um and then you can see in the himalaya world in the Himalaya area, a lot of people can do a lot of like yoga practice. You know, they can, they force them, they, they can do lots of things, but their inner being is normal. So, uh, sorry, I guess my point is that um, you need to, uh, we need to work on from within, if that makes sense. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to um, <laughs> not <laughs> entirely understanding you, but I I think mm. what you're suggesting is what I'm doing right now, which is mm. uh, that internal work rather than focusing on external. Yeah, exactly. I, think that, I think that is exactly what I've been doing. Yeah, that's that's exactly what you're doing, and that's probably meditation. The meaning of meditation, you know, you're working on yourself, and then yeah, yeah. Mm. And what else do you do you experience in your in your experience that you want to share? You know, like during meditation, other than the feelings. Uh, yeah, sure. I guess um, a trend for me these last few months has been like how what arises in the mind mm. is just bullshit. It's not real, and so um. I would say I'm way less attached to what is arising in my mind. Right. It feels a lot more like this is just a thing that is happening and it's arising. And a lot of the judgment that used to be there about the thing arising is is not really there anymore. Before it used to be like this desire to understand it, criticize it, fix it, control it, to to make some sense or meaning out of it. But now it's just like, oh, this is this fun thing. So it feels a lot, my mind feels a lot kinder and a lot less attached to, um, to what is going on. 
So in that sense, it's a lot more freeing. I'd say that's a big one. Um, my awareness, I suppose, or bubble of awareness has expanded a fair bit. So things or details look different mm. now. I can notice mm. more, not always. Sometimes increases, and sometimes decreases. Mm. Um, yeah, things like that. I write some all down. Um, don't know if I... Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much um it. Um yeah. What about you? How's your practice going? What is your practice? Um I do I do meditation. I used to find meditation quite hard because my mind is really just going crazy. And then I force myself to sort of like okay i have to do this for an hour and i'm not going to give up you know and then this kind of like inner struggle and then it's not a very pleasant experience also also i realize i need to be aware of what i put into my psychic every day because there are lyrics lyrics in music are quite suicidal you know like like oh i love you i'm I love you so much. I'm going to die for you. This is very suicidal. But back then, I listened to that unconsciously all the time, you know, in the club. Mm. Or it's just all those vibrations messed up my my psychic, I think. <laughs> because I become more chaotic. I become more rational. I become more, like, insane, really. And then I sort of, like, cut off, be very careful with the music that I listen to. And then also the people that I'm talking to and also realize how how the human connection has a flag, a effect on myself. Because if I'm dealing with, mm, but that's a really tricky, but that needs awareness because sometimes I, I, I thought my friends are positive. But when you spend more time with them, you realize, oh my God, th he's actually a, a bit negative than I thought he would be. And then what what do I need to do? How do I define this relationship right now? And how do I, yeah, it's just those kind of things because I used to be a very chaotic person. And then I just see the person that I'm now, I realize, you know, that that's when I realize um, what is natural and what is not natural, I guess, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I totally yeah. resonate with the whole music thing, eh? Mm. I think. It's crazy how much music out there is basically like programming conditionings, right? Yes. And then you really identify and attach to it. Even yes. like musicians, like really good musicians, like for example, Taylor Swift is really popular. She's got a massive mm -hmm. fan base. A lot of her music is about, or a lot of her older songs are about like relationships and breakups. And uh, if you listen to the lyrics, um, they all have the story attached to it. And that's what makes it so appealing for um, most a lot of people and a lot of women as well, um, a lot of young girls. But they're listening to this music and it's kind of programming a certain view of uh, dysfunctional relationships or, you know, yes. all this drama and all these things happening and needing. And, um, yeah, it's not necessarily, like, good. And it's really hard for most people to, to realize it. I mean, I would say pretty much nobody realizes it unless you um, are really in deep into this work that it is having some sort of impact on you yeah yes when you sometimes like like i used to listen to the music all the time but back then i was into rock music and then it's i went on you know it's all about destroy it's all about revenge for other people and i became this kind of person from time to time because i listened to this kind of music 24 seven all the time. And then that energy just built up in, inside of myself. And then I become this kind of person who, who I, who I, you know, I, I feel like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm on a self-destruct self-destruction mode. And then, but it takes, so that's, that's why, like, as you said, you know, if you want to manifest something beautiful in your life, you want to create something in your consciousness. And then what do you put in your 
what kind of music do you listen to? What kind of friends do you do you have? And how how nur nurturing is your personal intimate relationship with people as well? And then also, is that like is that like you know Taylor Swift's song? You know, like is that full of jealousy, full of like fight? You know, make you wonder. Oh my God, relationship. That's what relationship is all about. It's about fight. No, relationship is not about fight. It's about loving, intimacy, and be honest with each other. And then, and also when I when I when I accept the programming from Taylor Swift and or other people, I find myself constantly not focusing on my life. But focusing on the cele celebrity's life, like I pay more attention to other people than myself. But experience is only relevant to individual. I don't need to care about what Taylor Swift is going on in her life, you know, because I'm here to live my life. And that take also when you are to listen to all this emotional sound a lot. Um, I think I lost clarity for reality. Because when you are, sometimes you, you need to be neutral. You don't need to add your emotional feelings towards any situation. And then by sometimes, it, um, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. No, that totally, makes, that totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, I've got a similar sort of philosophy on that. Yes. Yeah. What type of um, some meditation or energy work do you do? Would you mind sharing some of your practices? I do. Um, uh, I'm not too sure if I can say in your broadcast because it's it's somehow a little bit sexual. I think. Okay, we can share one yeah. of them today. Oh, if if you're okay with that, I'll, yeah, of it's course, okay. I'm happy it's to okay. Share. Yeah, I do this like full body, energetic orgasm practice every day <laughs> because. I had a very interesting theory, um, oh, not not from me, but from Osho. He said that uh, your sex sex energy is your basic energy, and then if you repress that sexual energy, energy needs to flow. It will flow towards other ways. Like some people become obsessive with. Uh, that's why he says that like a sex repressed society will become very developed in all the ways. You know politics. Um, art and many other things but in the aboriginal society it's non-existent human civilization is non-existent because the energy doesn't manifest in other ways in a sense even for the christianity even for the religious people because they're, the god become their lover if you listen to their prayer it's full of lust it's like, God, I love you. I think of you day and night. I don't think of any other body, any other body. And they, you know, it's 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 a lover relationship. Mm. That's true. So, I didn't think of that. But um it's definitely true. I listened to a good amount of like Hillsong United, the Christian band. Mm. And same type of thing. They have a lot of um like God, I love you, and you're the only one for me, and things like that. Yeah. It's sexual, <laughs> yeah. In in a way, in a, not. Would you yeah. say? Would you interesting? But would you say it's sexual necessarily, or would you say it's like a love attachment, like projecting this image onto something, in order to just love that rather than loving everything? Yeah, I think I think that's that's. I like the way you put it. Yeah, I like the way you put it. Like rather than. Because after all, it's just a fantasy. God is just a fantasy. <laughs> he doesn't really exist, does he? <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, that's um, an interesting question. It's yeah. the more I explore into this um world and do more meditation, but also listen to people that um are experiencing non duality or like enlightenment. Um it make, it makes you really realize how little a lot of these guys know. And the claims that you can make um, yes. about all these things, like some people, for example, some aligned people have made some really strong claims, but then you listen to other people like Shinzen Young, and he's very scientific. Daniel Ingram, also kind of more rational, scientific. Um, right. And so 
they have a very different they're still enlightened just like Vishrant is but their views or views on on what you can speak on and what you can't speak on is very different to uh, Vishrant um, but Vishrant for example might make claims uh, as if it's the truth right make strong mm. claims and other people might actually contradict those claims I think Osho did it as, a lot as well right or mm. apparently Osho used to contradict himself regularly um, mm. like all yeah. the time and people contradict mm. Osho and so it's the real question about like what can you know and then what is this sort of added thing that um, people have added which is really their own mind but they don't really realize it's their own mind because even when they are enlightened they still have some character right there's no sense of self but it still seems like they all have a personality they all have mm -hmm. that personality or, or the the uh, characters still there they just don't have that attachment to the character anymore mm, yeah that's what that's it looks a... like but it, but i'm not there yeah. yet so i wouldn't know mm, neither i'm not there yet no i'm not as well maybe maybe one day mm, hopefully <laughs> hopefully but, yeah but i but i dig into it you know there is a lot of like religious um i was actually just watching another film it's called Samur samura it's about a monk who went to meditation for three years and then all the other people think he's achieved but he, he got it this guy honestly because when he come when people find him in the cave his hair is like you know it's, he's like a a pr pr primitive guy and the nails is too long and then he did it but when he came back to um but now he's sort of like an adult now. And then one night he had a sex dream and he had a wet, 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 wet dream, you know, he ejaculated. Mm. And then all the other monks just pretended that it didn't happen. But he keep having this kind of sex dream. And then he, one day he met a lady and then he sort of like decide to have a worldly life with that woman. And then they, they, um, and then they, he, yeah, he enjoyed it. You know, he had kids, he had all of that. And one night he, and also he started to experience the challenges in the worldly life. Like suddenly he found other women attractive, but he's care about the fidelity of his love towards his wife. And then he find more and more challenge in worldly life. And then one day he received a letter from the monk you know the sort of like about to die and then used to be his like master he said that are you willing to conquer one desire which is sex or do you want to satisfy a thousand desire because in there they want to they want to they they live in a very aesthetic life you know no sex no no anything just all you want is enlightenment and then you sort of like make your body suffer. And then when he, so he's decided to abandon his wife and his son. And then his, his, uh, his wife noticed and had a chat with him saying that the Buddha abandoned his wife as well. You know, but do you know, realize how lonely his wife and, um, and the wife even said, if you, if your lust and passion is as strong you, uh, oh sorry her wife said you showed me passion and love if your passion for enlightenment is as strong as your love towards me then i will let you go and then that's the end of the movie it's beautiful yeah 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 yeah. oh i gotta watch it it sounds fascinating yes 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 sounds like a good movie what's it called again samura samura is yeah. it japanese it's uh it's in all the film is in english and tibetan yeah oh it's a tibetan movie yes right, summer. right. when was yeah. it based when it was based i think it was released in 2008 maybe mm, i'm not right. too sure so but was it set <laughs> yeah. was it set like a thousand years ago or a hundred years ago or a couple hundred years ago uh maybe 50 years ago 50 years ago oh okay yeah. right so quite recent that's actually 
after mm. or I guess the Dalai Lama was still in Tibet at that time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a this movie is all about loss, you know, sex and the enlightenment. Yeah. yeah. How do you balance your? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Going going back to it, it's, it's really interesting, right? Because. Uh, I th- I think people have this view of enlightenment or waking up based on the few people that originally did wake up like the Buddha or, you know, even people after him, but they were individuals that had a very indi- individual path. Right. Mm. And so you look at those um, philosophies where, you know, you shave your head and you go to a monastery and mm. you, you meditate, you, you're kind of out of this world. Mm. Then you look at, Buddhisms that have come later, like um, Vajrayana, which is more that energy based practice, and th- they are all about. I mean, look at the, the lamas there, and they have, um, you know, like nice robes, some of them have cars and possessions, money, things like that, right? So the mm. key isn't that you can't have it, it's the key is like that attachment to it that oh, I need to get this, I need to get that. And it makes sense that, you know, back in the early days, the original Buddha was kind of like, you know, be simple, live simple life, all of these things. Because I suppose if you, it's hard to um, go down the path when you're also pursuing all these other things, you kind of need to be focused, right? But it's, it's I guess, interesting in this uh, modern age, I I feel like it might not be necessary anymore mm. Mm. and i think part of that might be because of the both the knowledge that we have mm. secondly the amount of attachments that you could attach on on anything and desires and wants there's so many right we're, mm. we're being bombarded with them i i think that's almost a, a valuable object of meditation right like extremism when you have an extreme amount of something you then realize, oh, it's an illusion. Like, I don't need that thing. Mm. And so I think because of the extreme amount of whatever, it's a really good opportunity for meditation, for um, detaching yourself from that object. Detach yourself from that object. Yeah. Yeah. There's an, a world for detachment, I guess. Mm, renounce, renouncement? Renunciation? Like, you are like, Oh, I don't need beautiful clothes anymore. I don't enjoy delicious food anymore. I don't uh, want beautiful woman. Is that what you're saying? Is this a... no? It's different. So I think oh. renouncement's like I'm not gonna do those things, but the person oh, that okay. renounces them might still want them. Like if you think gotcha. about all these monks, they're like, I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. It's kind of like a suppression, right? Yes. I yes. think it's making it might be making it even harder for them. Instead. Um, realizing it's about the practice itself yes. and the practice itself teaches you to lose those attachments you can still have it right like if you read Pukhav now by Eckhart Tolle he talks about um, you know you can still have um, you can still have a nice body you can go to the gym right mm. still enjoy the body but mm. realize that it's going to fade it's impermanent it's going to be there for some time, but it's not always going to be there. And as it goes away, that's also fine. So it's more that mm. need to have that thing, the need to have that money, but you can still have money. You can still be happy. And I, th- I think somebody that really, um, which is, I think, a really great example is um, Frank Yang. The cool mm. thing about Frank is um, not only as a young person, or I guess he's like in his thirties now, but he's relatively young. He's more relatable, but also he he came from a bodybuilding background, mm. and he still continues to bodybuild. Which you look at anybody else, um, any other sort of person that's um, awake, and they might have a certain persona, or they might have a sort of a guru type look and feel to them. But this guy's just a regular dude. He's just a body. He enjoys bodybuilding. He still bodybuilds. He still goes to the gym, but he does it for his enjoyment now. He's not attached to it, but he enjoys it. Things like yeah. that. And it's realizing examples like Frank and a few other guys as well mm. um, that are just very normal makes you realize, wow, this is actually a normal thing. It's like this normal type of 
realizing the nature of reality, um, which um, leads me back to a realization that I've kind of been having is the simplicity of it. Mm. And then also we have all these labels or, t- or ideas of what awakening should be based on mm. viewing all these other gurus or mm. or people or books and things like that. But these are just labels, right? At the end yes. of the day, it's us trying to figure it out or understand it, which keeps us away from um, our own realization mm. because we are now back in the mind. The only thing that can transcend the mind is to be out of the mind, which is the practice of meditation itself. And so mm. I think, this is what I think, I might be wrong, and I'm curious if anyone has thoughts, put them in the comments below. But what I think is to really transcend that is just to do the practice itself and mm. the practice itself of awareness mm. transform you. Anything mm. else is kind of shaming yourself. Like, like, oh, I shouldn't have this thought. Oh, I need to give up money. Oh, I need to do this or that. But that's taking you away from the the point of the goal it's like if you're smoking and you want to quit smoking you could shame yourself for it or you could smoke and be very conscious of smoking be very very Mm -hmm. aware and mindful and actually in studies have shown that's had like a really great effect and on allowing people to quit smoking because once you become conscious of something it starts to unravel on its own and then you start to sort of let go of it naturally or effortlessly yeah. Yes. 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 Mm. Yeah. I like what you said about mindful of smoking. You know, in itself, it can be a meditation. I like it. Yeah. 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 Anything can be a meditation, right? Yes. Any moment. It's like your practice doesn't begin and end at the seat. Your practice is always like it's through the day as well. Every moment is an opportunity for practice. For sure. And then for- you might st- begin to notice that, like, meditation is just happening on its own. You mm. actually hear like people that are very like extreme on the non duality side of things talk about they're like, oh, you don't even need to meditate because everything is just happening. And obviously, technically they're right but they're also coming from the perspective of like they're so far gone Mm. and that everything is just happening and they Mm. have awareness and awareness that um it's not really practical for most people especially until you get there meditation is still really important to to allow you to build that awareness but actually what is happening is just like awareness is always there like you can't really not have it technically if that makes sense it does it does it's just a different form and there's so many obstructions in our like vision and mind that we aren't aware that the awareness is even there so we're like kind Mm. of unconscious to it yeah Mm. yeah so like rupert sarah um i listened to a talk on him and there's this idea that um, you are like already of I mean, some people say it, but like they kind of say that everyone is already enlightened and they just haven't like realized it yet. And the and they're kind of true, but kind of not true. But what they're kind of coming trying to say is that basically everything that is there in the moment is already there. But because there's so many things, like in the way, so many conditionings, you can't see it. Yes. So it's more like this undoing process to remove those things so you can see it. What do you do for deep programming or deep hypnosis? So I've tried to change my, my view on it. Before, I used to... So... And I think there's a big community out there that focuses like more externally or like in the mid, the midway stage of the brain where they're like thinking about, 
oh, I think this. So I'm going to change my mindset. I'm going to change how I think about something and which is the most optimum approach to think and believe. And, and you're kind of operating in this up, upper layer. And I used to operate there too. But I think it's really limited because you're constantly fighting in the mind and you're constantly trying to find the most optimum, the best belief, the best way of being. Mm. And and it's it's kind of limited, right? And it's really slow mm -hmm. as well. It's really slow. Now, I think as you do more meditation, the conditioning starts to unravel on their own. And mm. then you, f you kind of move into a state of presence. Okay. And once you can move into more of a state of presence, a lot of the shadow work type of stuff is less like required or needed. And it kind of happens on its own and it happens a lot faster. Yeah. yeah. That's what mm. I, that's what I think. Um but if I were to, to give something practical to people, because I'm a big fan of this, is like the let it go method or Sedona method, where you so, so you have an emotion in your life that comes up and you welcome that emotion, you notice mm. the emotion, and then you let go of the emotion. You mm. notice how you are desiring some form of um, acceptance or control, you need to change something, you need to change, understand something, you just notice all those things mm. and you just mm. allow it to be here and it starts to unravel on its own and then eventually disappear. So that would be the best sort of form of inner work that I would recommend. I still haven't figured it fully, like come to grasp of like how to have external goals, but at the same time be, um, come from more of an effortless flow because often when we yeah. too external, it can give us issues, but if we're too internal, then we might not do anything. So, so um, it's figuring out that middle way. And I haven't mm. figured out that middle way properly yet, but I'm still exploring. That's, I think I, I, I think I want to know the middle way as well. Yeah. I don't know what's the, the good balance. Yeah. Yeah. I like what you said. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we all need that, right? Everybody, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Just not just, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm. What are your goals for this year? If you mind sharing, I really want to um, um, visit Tibet, and then I would like I would like to um, have I want to find the uh, ecstasy in life again. I feel like yeah. I felt that when I was a kid, you know, when I was a kid, I feel like everything is so, you know, the feeling like I can't wait to get up every day in the morning and explore the world. Oh, that wonderment. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. I, I want, mm, yeah. And if, and I want someone who can show me real knowledge and real, real, real method to enlightenment, not just beautiful talk, you know, not just, bullshit yeah i want something practical and yeah if that... <laughs> i see i see yeah do you think such a path can only be found within or do you think it could be found externally mm, I, I read a few books about the the disciple and master relationship in 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 india and in tibet himalaya there are, there are lots of those stories but they always say that the master is sort of like a more conscious person and then or sort of like a um a reflection of what you what you can become as well. You don't need to worship them. So I guess that's that is that what you're asking? About yeah, external Yeah, because because there's a lot of like, like that relationship in um like more ancient traditions, right? Of that yes, yeah. um master servant relation not servant, but master student relationship. Mm. And for, and in some respects, that's really good because there's a lot of like, you become like the people you hang out with, right? So if you hang out with mm. some of very awake mm. people, you're going to become more awake. You know, they're going to call you out on on things. You're going to become more aware and transmission yeah. of energy, right? This idea of a Buddha field, just by being in their presence, you'll feel mm. their energy and that will start to 
light the flame in your torch. So it'd be like passing that torch down. So there's something valuable about that. Right. But also I, I think it might not be like as necessary or mm, I think it, mm. it forms attachment to the, the guru or the person people look up to because then they start saying, oh, this person is different from me. He's this person I need to be. And they form some like mental image and that help, that actually entraps them. Um, yes. Because now mm. they're thinking it's outside of them. Like, you know how when you assign something to like this God figure, oh, but I am, I can't be, you know, like this. I am, you know, and then they put themselves down and don't realize mm. sort of their, their own power is coming from that like shame-based philosophy. So I think that could be like a flaw. Yes. I think that's definitely one of my, w- w- one of the things that um, I'm actually very happy that you, to are you know like sort of like notice that part i think for a long long time i was kind of hoping like i would find a master from the out you know and then then i will be enlightened you know and then but we have to yeah it's, it's sort of like um a fantasy in my in my mind and i think with that fantasy in my mind i would easily fall into cult cult yeah. Or I stuff because, um, because I I I lost, I was, I was a bit crazy on, uh, this idea of like, um, in in enlightenment. I guess yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. I was listening to a podcast and um, I'm gonna chat with one of these guys in the podcast actually very soon. Um, really cool podcast, but it was uh, with Joe and. Um, another guy and the other guy had recently hit fourth path which is oh. like i think the f- close to the final stage of alignment or is the final stage i'm not entirely yeah. sure um yeah. but um with him like he's super normal right <laughs> he like he works at the supermarket he drinks yeah. alcohol yeah you know things that you you know you wouldn't characterize but he's got this like mm. innate joy to him so listening to him listening to some other podcasts of like young people that have woken up that aren't like gurus makes you realize like wow this is like actually kind of normal and that actually is kind of mind-blowing to see how how normal they seem it's like it's not this oh i think it's almost like because you've got a lot of fake gurus as well and they almost put on a persona they put on an act or it's a lineage-based thing right it's like a passed on tradition so they're acting a certain way because they've been trained in that tradition to act mm. that way mm. um but then i suppose you got to realize it's like it's all in a very individual process too right and yeah. I, I think the practice itself should lead one there um and it's less about like trying to figure out or figure it out or understand it um yeah. because the practice itself will will teach you what you need to learn yeah. uh, in order to like evolve yeah for sure I think I definitely worshipped quite a few a, a few fake guru in my life because I when I started exploring, I was fifteen, and then back then, when I saw someone and I used I remember. I I went to see a monk because everybody, told me that, he is enlightened, you know, and then he has real knowledge, you know, and then I went to see him. And then with all the expectation, turns out he's not enlightened, you know, but he keep educating on me and told me that I need to follow him. You know, I need to follow him to be enlightened. How did you know he wasn't, he wasn't enlightened? <laughs> it just, <laughs> I'm sure like he's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> yeah. <It's... laughs> but, but I think he, because um, I think when you are in a state of being like, like you know, when people do the retreat, you know, um, people pass out and thinking they are enlightened because they did it for a long time. Maybe they, 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 they do the mantra, you know, like a ma 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 for, for a few days, and then they see, they say they see God because they self hypnotize themselves, and yeah. then. 
that's not real. Yeah, that's how I feel with him. <laughs> often, often a lot of that's like conditioning to unraveling as well. Mm, like, mm, mm. like basically whatever you think or whatever philosophy you have starts to come out when you do a lot of meditation. And so when you start having more profound and mystical experiences, and this is what I've heard, you start seeing um, those things. So mm. you might start seeing it visually, kind of almost mm. psychedelic. So if you, if you are um, Buddhist, you might see the Buddha. If you are Christian, you might see the Christ. Mm. If, you, yeah. if you are something else, if you believe that everything is consciousness, you're going to be confronted with that. If you believe everything is something else, you're going to be confronted with that. And so then mm. people are like, oh, this is what I've seen. This is this message or whatever. But it's actually just your conditionings that are unraveling. Yeah. Um, and people get stuck on that stage, I think. Um, mm. And then they spend you know, a lot of time like enjoying the Kundalini energies and being like, Kundalini, Kundalini, this is the thing. Mm, mm, but it's mm. like they get stuck, right? They don't transcend above it and they're just building like spiritual power and going like mm. sideways, not actually upwards. So I've yeah. heard. Yeah. 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 So I think a lot of, I think a lot of like practitioners and teachers and stuff have had that sideways thing where they're like, actually, they're still developing, but they're developing like kind of sideways where they're like adding more and more and more to their, like to their character and maybe their energetic teachings, but not necessarily yeah. like transcendent teachings, um, yeah. which is like transcending beyond that as well. Like even dissolving those ideas which is why when you get to like, I guess the final stage, that's when you talk, you see people like Shinzen Young that are way more mm. secular and scientific. And then you have other people that are more like uh, on the God side of things. And it's like, nobody really knows. Mm. And exactly. that's why you can have multiple different like viewpoints as well at the final stage. Yeah. Yeah. At the final stage. Yeah. It's like it's kind of like mm -hmm. what reality is, mm. and then what what we want reality to to um to be, and we like put all these like expectations and viewpoints and um desires on like reality. Our oh, reality reality should be a certain way. Reality should have this certain model or that certain model. But I guess that's mm -hmm. all like attachments at the end of the day, right? That's mm. what I think. I'm not sure. I'd be really curious to chat to somebody else that would like disagree with me on this and yeah see what they say mm. yeah do you believe we have the power to create our life you know because sometimes people say your belief create your reality you know the secret says that you know if you get into a positive state if you want to be rich then just imagine yourself as if you're already rich dress as if you're already rich and then you will attract money this kind of like things do you believe yeah and that's that's a really interesting one as well mm. so i guess the more extreme non-dual teachers would be like everything is just you know like happening so you have no control over that anyway like it's just mm. arising and it's just arising and passing away and mm. it's kind of like are you are you there or are you are you changing it or are you not changing it or maybe you are doing both nobody really knows so even the whole like idea of oh you are manifesting something maybe but may, maybe yes but maybe it was just like that thing happened rather than mm -hmm. necessarily you doing it i think some some people might say that but then from the our perspective where we're like still kind of very material and we're not like have, we don't have non-dual awareness um yeah maybe maybe um if we put ourselves in some state the universe does respond in a certain way that does create those things in our external reality i'm not really sure but i think there's something to um allowing or attracting the thing by creating more ease in your life regarding that thing. So I think when somebody wants to manifest something, they might have a lot of like strong desire. I need this thing thinking about it all the time, but it's kind of like pushing it away mm, rather than like that, realizing yeah. the abundance of what is and what you have. And then like desiring it in a non-attached way, 
like mm. which i think can be really hard to do um but it's kind of like creating that more flow and that ease and the effortlessness towards that thing rather than creating resistance around it and i think when you remove the resistance that you have towards that thing it starts to come into your life so yeah. i think that's the real key it's not necessarily like you are like i guess yeah if you're removing resistance you are attracting it but i think mm. it's it's mm-hmm. i see it more like that rather than more of a more of a woo woo like it's just gonna appear to you if you want to win the lottery dream of the lottery and you win the lottery i think i'm i'm not really like a big proponent of that um yeah i'm more like removing the um resistance and then the thing will be attracted to you more because you aren't resisting that thing so energetically um it will come towards you yeah Mm. what about you what do you think because when i when i when i um when i discovered the book the secrets and then i was wondering a lot because i kind of feel like i now i got the key to create my life so i picture myself being successful i picture myself doing like you know get all the straight eyes from school you know it didn't happen and then when i and then i went to when i do yoga there is some of the pose that just no matter how hard i try no matter no matter how hard i picture that i can do it i still can't and then also there are some few people that i want to be in a relationship with and i picture myself being with them all the time and then it didn't happen with specifically that person sometimes so back then i kind of feel like being sort of like a bit resentment and a bit of feel cheated i feel like i'm, I'm doing this all the time you know and then why it didn't manifest in my life. And then I think, I think comes down to it. We all want something we want to manifest in our life, I think, you know? And then, so, but I, I kind of believed, uh, but I also believe that, um, um, but some of the work that I did, did work, work, work out, you know? I think many, many of the things happened last year was my manifestation, you know? Cause I did ask, for the universe or higher self or or my inner god i did want that and then it happened and i I feel like some some of the experience i need to take responsibility but sometimes like like um yeah so i i think i'm not too sure as well but i like to picture Uh, things to happen yeah what do you think was different about it this time and that allowed it to happen compared to last time or was it just luck? Do you think? I think sometimes when you, when you know something is about to happen, you have a feeling. Like I always get a feeling, like oh my god, I knew this is going to happen, and then then you sort of like, l- like um, like fate. People say fate or your life purpose. Like some people came here when I talk chat with them, they have a strong purpose of what they want to do in this life. And then, um, I don't know, eh? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's all right. Speaking of yeah, like having that yeah. strong purpose, um, to know yeah. what you want to do in life. Um, yes. Where do you yeah. think that comes from? How do you think somebody should develop that in your experience? Oh, it's cut off. I think it's your passion. Oh no! Oh, oh. oh no! It's, we... it's back again. It's back yeah. again. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. I I think it's your passion because because I used to wonder, like, oh, what's my life purpose? And I kind of feel like once I find that life purpose, I need to do it for the rest of my life. <laughs> it's kind of dreadful to think about that. So I kind of feel like, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe there are many many life purpose. You know, maybe the life purpose is to enjoy the life. So I would say passion. What what do you passion like? What you do now, you know, like you enjoy mm. doing broadcast. Then this is your life. So purpose, it's more like an in moment thing, right? Rather than yeah. like yeah. if you if you think yeah. about it, was that just made me at a realization? Like if you think about it, everybody's desiring this life purpose, and it's kind mm. of this completionist aspect where it's like you need to assign something to this purpose to have feel mm. complete to have this end goal. 
So you know, know what do you want to do in life to give you that security and safety. Um, but, security and safety, yeah. but ultimately you can't, you can't really know that. Right. Um, and mm. it's kind of feel it making you feel trapped as well, because now you need to um, know what the life purpose is. You need to work it out, which is creating a lot of resistance. So it's mm. almost like whatever's coming naturally um, is, mm. is more purposeful then that thing and then with all these sub purposes or things that come naturally um if something's coming naturally more then you could do that thing more right yeah i've got a friend he really want to be famous like like he because he believed that if he become famous life would be you know so exciting every day you just sort of like meeting with your fans and then you know, drawing interviews on on TV. So he want that lifestyle, and then, and then, and then he asked me. He said, "Lucas, do you think I can be famous one day?" Of course, as a friend, I would say, "Yeah, <laughs> you know, you will be." And then, then he said, he told me he really believed that is his life purpose. Like he came here to become famous, and once he become famous, he will. Help many other people to reach life, their life potential and stuff. But I, I don't know. Like, like I think my father would be a very example, a good example as well. I think he always knew what he wanted to do. Other than that, he doesn't want to do nothing else really interesting in him. For so he always followed his path, and I actually can kind of like that, you know. Because I'm a little bit at at this moment in life, I'm exploring everything, but nothing too deep. You know, I touch a bit of, I touch, sometimes explore religion, sometimes explore sexuality or spirituality or other culture, but I'm not really doing something big, you know? I'm, mm. I don't really have a purpose as in a career, you know? So, <laughs> yeah 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 i'm similar in that regard i do a lot of things breadth not depth um but i think they will change over time mm, yeah yeah what would be what what would what would you think would be your life purpose you know like for you oh i don't know that's a good one i would say internal internal um accomplishment really mm. like not external but like everything for me has been internal um mm. like internal transcendence um internal improvement so whatever that yeah. might be but but yeah well i guess we'll see we'll see we'll see yeah i think it'll, i think as time goes on i think i'll start to, to switch actually switch to more external things but I won't be so attached to them because I've built this really strong framework. Um, that'll be like, it'll just be things I'm doing for fun, right? Even work will be yeah. like way more fun than it is right now. Like ultimately, uh -huh. I want work to be like really fun. I was thinking about it the other day. Like when I was younger, I used to really enjoy reading books and like fiction mm. books. Yes. And books about like random things i just really get engrossed in them and i was thinking mm. man like every book i've written last like many years have just been like self-improvement or like for a purpose mm. it's been like this because of this because whatever you know because of whatever goal it's very like you know don't want to waste time desiring to be efficient not for this like childlike wonderment of like creativity mm. and play and joy and mm. so what I would like is to move towards that um, more spontaneous, creative type of um, desire in, like, in, in life where you are, you know, just reading because it's fun or mm. having that same sort of feeling again. Yeah. But I can't make myself of that. So we will see if it starts to unfold naturally i think the education system 
removes a lot of that from people because it it takes you down a certain train of thinking and then it trains your brain to be like very test focused and yes. very like outcome driven. And so now I'm very outcome driven in how my mind operates. I think there's a lot of conditioning there that I'm like not really aware of. Because I think most conditioning that people confront is like firstly that emotional type of shadow work. Um, but I think I'm more at the stage of their work or education system type conditioning where it's like the effetting that's coming into work or the uh-huh. um the outcome focus of everything that one does because of the um the outcome driven like approach to the education system yeah by the way i hate school <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i just don't really yeah i i feel like some of my creativity been taken away from school as well because it's just a, a very disciplined way i sort of need to create a lot of like block within myself to stop my energy flow to a certain way because it might be too much for for classroom because you need to be quiet you know you need to pay attention to the teacher rather than being trying to listen to my inner guts, you know, or my intuition. I learned to pick that up uh, last year, you know, to sort of follow my intuition. It's, it's, um, yeah, yeah. Do you think you are sort of like removed some of the conditioning from society and school now? Or are you still on, some, on the journey? Definitely some, but I'm still on the journey. I think there's still heaps to go. Um, What's yeah. the biggest condition you removed that you you know you you are over with you you, you sort of like oh well i mean the big one for me is the whole like caring about what other people think of you um but it's not removed totally it's just removed like a, a good amount which is phenomenal compared to how strong it was over me before mm. um so that was probably the biggest one for me yeah what about you mm. uh oh now now i think i think i'm the same but but i just want to add that to my my view on sex and relationship how relationships supposed to be because i kind of used to believe that you know like the fairy tale like two people find each other and then let and fall in love and then forever that's it in real life it's not like that <laughs> right right yeah yeah so and um and my relationship with my parents and friends well you know i used to believe that i i need to do my parents tell me what to do because then i will be a good son and then that's a very hard one for me to remove i'm still a little bit like in influ- sort of like um under under yeah. the influence yeah but i just thought that one to to some extent as well I think it's probably yeah. one of the toughest ones to to really remove there. Eh? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm, what would be can I ask you like what would be the the maybe in your imagination, what would be the best life or your highest potential you can ever imagine, you know? For Ooh, you. That's a that's a really interesting one. I don't think I've spent heaps of time thinking about that actually. Um, mm. Cause I've always been a more of a, in the moment type of guy. Right. In right, fact, I right. don't even, dwell, in fact, I've thought about that. Eh? I don't even dwell on the past. Like I pretty much never think about the past. Like I oh, think really? about what's happened like maybe a little while ago, but it'd be like okay. maybe less than a month, maybe like last week or something. Mm. But if pretty much everything if it happens in my my brain gets wiped. It's like ding 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 ding. And like I'm thinking about right now, or I'm thinking about a bit in the future. But pretty much I'm not really thinking about the past at all. Which makes it actually sometimes hard to think of like memories of the past because I'm like I don't ever go over them in my mind. So I don't really remember them. Uh, what about you? Do you go over the, the past much or who I I think I pretty much Mm, hold on to the past quite really? quite wrong yeah like okay. i can still remember what happened when i was five 
really i can't i can't do that at all i yeah at some i don't even remember high school that much <laughs> oh my god I, i I'm remember jealous. some uni i remember university but like not that much detail like it i have to spend some time thinking about it and now that um, i'm thinking about it memories are coming up so obviously they are there but i'm um, not like re-remembering them so you know eventually my brain's like well if it's if he never thinks about this it's obviously not useful and it deletes it oh my yeah. god i i need to that's what i want for this year to to do <laughs> I, I think i hold on to the past too much yeah okay <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've thought about that. Eh? I'm actually I'm like, maybe I should think about the past more, eh? Maybe there are lessons to extract here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe once a month or something I should like take up my pen and paper and think about the past. That'd be a good mm -hmm. like thought exercise since I don't really do it. Probably not for you though. Um mm. but yeah, what did my ideal life look like? I guess like joy in the moment, just like having mm. a blast doing everything I'm mm. doing. I think that's mm. that'd be like the best life. And then yes. obviously externally, yeah. like I want to travel, I want to um create something, I want to be creative. So like I have a blog, I like to write on my blog. I want to do something of that. Eh? I want to like really continue that. I enjoy writing. Um, I want oh. to make some more videos, move into making more videos, just about random stuff. Doesn't necessarily even have to be successful, but just like something more fun and creative. Fun and creative, yeah. Fun and creative. Like some type of business where I can help people would be ideal for me, I think. Where mm. I can help people with what I've learned. Mm. And I think that would be in the form of like coaching or creating courses for people on different topics mainly meditation letting go anxiety um self-esteem things like that i think it's probably where my expertise lie right right so those if those areas i'd really like to like help people in, and and i've started doing that as well like i had a practice session with a friend um last week and yeah we just went over some um some letting go exercises on some particular things he was struggling with and that was actually really helpful for me to like to really see what i was capable of as well and i'm like well i mm. can actually do this so i need mm. i need to continue doing that and I, I want to continue doing that and finding some more people that would be keen to like trial it out and yeah build up my skills get in front of more people mm. what about you uh, um what, what 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 about me? Like what what sort of what's the oh question? that that like ideal life? Oh ideal life, oh yeah I like I like what you said about traveling. I do want to um see the world, and um but internally I want I want to be a very, I, I want knowledge. I want to be this kind of person that know knows life, and then share. Also I want to. I want to, if possible, I want to make films about, you know, many, many different topics, you know, maybe about enlightenment, maybe about, um, yeah, many, many things, things that I want to explore. But I imagine always have the, have the freedom to travel, but always have the, my own little place that I can retreat. And then um and have a sort of like a creative job i don't need to i don't need to work in the office from you know from nine to five and i can do whatever i want freedom yeah freedom to yeah to do yeah 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 What's i think the... of like software software companies because i'm a software engineer right mm -hmm. and i feel like it'd be cool to to really have my skills to be used for like an external focused business right Mm. But at the same time, it's really hard to think of like software that mm. is useful, that mm. is like, that's also bettering humanity in a positive way. Because if you look at like mm. social media, if you look at like TikTok and all these things, it's for me, 
I wouldn't want to build something like that because it's kind of taking away right. from presence, which is mm. the thing I think is most important for people. Um, so, but then there's obviously like businesses that are like utilities and help people, um, like optimize, automate. But then it, the whole thing for me is like, well, I feel like bettering or improving the consciousness of humanity is like kind of the most important thing. So my thought is like, is it possible to create something that helps with that? Or maybe there isn't, I don't know. Mm. I feel, I feel you are a very, um, uh, can I make assumption? Yeah. Go for it. I f- I feel like you are a very sensitive person and you've been through quite a few like challenge, you know, like, um, and you sort of mastered it. And then I do feel like you have a big, big vision for humanity. I, I think that's your love for other human being, I guess. And then, you know, as you said, race consciousness or, um, creating something that benefits the whole humanity. Yeah, that's the feeling I get from you. Yeah, and I think you're a very spiritual person as well. I don't know if that's I don't. Know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. I would say likewise. <laughs> oh, good. Thanks. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, end it on that positive note. Thank you so much for yeah. being on the podcast today. Do you have any um social media or anything you'd like to share? Um, social media. If you don't, that's like, also fine. Um, I don't have the moment. I don't have the yeah, moment. Yeah, no, that's that's all good. Yes, sweet. Mm-hmm. Thanks for chatting. Yeah. Thanks for 